Beautiful Shades of Brown, The Art of Laura Wheeler Waring by Nancy Chernin, illustrated by Felicia Marshall. Laura loved the color brown. She loved her mother's chocolate colored hair, her father's caramel coat, and all the different browns in the cheeks of her younger sisters and brothers. Some languages have 50 words for snow, she thought, swirling her brush in a puddle of chestnut paint. There should be 50 words for brown. It was hard to get each shade right. Laura dabbed a spot of paint on her skin. It didn't match at all, not until she added some red and yellow. Maybe you didn't see brown in a rainbow, she thought, but brown was a rainbow with orange and blue and red and green tucked inside, playing hide and seek. Laura spent hours mixing and blending, trying for the precise shade of the russet wrinkles by her father's eyes and the coffee-colored creases in her mother's hands. She bribed her sister and brothers with peppermints to sit while she tried to capture all their colors. One day, she dreamed, her paintings would hang in museums and everyone would see how much color brown could hold. That was a cozy, oh, that was a crazy idea for a 10-year-old in Connecticut in 1897. African-Americans had separate neighborhoods, churches, and schools. Nobody was going to put paintings of African-Americans on museum walls. Laura was young, but she was determined. Maybe there weren't portraits of African-Americans in museums yet, but she could turn her room into a gallery. At least there, her sisters and brothers could see pictures of people with all different shades of brown smiling back at them. All through high school, Laura wanted only one thing, to go to a real art school, a place where she could learn to get the images she saw in her head out onto canvas. She applied to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. It was far from home, expensive, and nearly all white. But when she got the acceptance letter, there was no question. Laura would get a job if she had to, but she would go. The academy was a good start, but Laura was hungry to learn more, to be around real artists. Everyone knew there was only one place to study art, Paris. Laura worked hard and won a scholarship. Clutching her paint box, she boarded a ship. Just like at school, near, nearly everyone around her was white, but her sketchbook was filled with portraits of people she loved, with luminous brown tones she didn't want to forget. In Paris, Laura visited museums and studied the paintings of Monet, Manet, and Cezanne. She set up her easel in the Jardin de Pomme, I don't speak French, and copied the green skin of the Trex singers, the blue faces of Matisse's women, the caramel bodies of Gauguin's Tahitians. All the different ways people could be painted reminded Laura of what she'd wanted from the start, to paint portraits like the people she knew, people full of beautiful shades of brown. Back home in Philadelphia, Laura heard about a young African-American singer performing Handel's Messiah at the Union Baptist Church. Marian Anderson was just a teenager, but when she walked out on stage, she held her head as high as a queen. Then Marion sang, and she didn't sound young at all. Laura's eyes filled with tears. It was as if she was hearing what she had been trying to paint for so long. Marion's notes rose and danced about her in beautiful shades of brown. One day I'm going to paint Marion Anderson, Laura promised herself. Paris had made Laura's paintings more bold and confident. News spread about the remarkable artist whose subjects breathed on canvas. In 1944, the director of the Harmon Foundation told Laura they wanted to build a collection of portraits of important African Americans. Would Laura like to paint them? Well, yes, she would. Laura painted journalists and activist Alice Dunbar Nelson with ebony brown gloves on her rosy brown skin, proud in bright yellow dress. She painted Broadway lyricist and poet James Weldon Johnson, a dashing dark mustache on his sensitive face. She painted educator and writer W.E.B. Du Bois, wearing a warm brown suit and smoky topaz tie, holding a sorrel colored glasses. 
Laura was looking for more subjects when she saw a familiar name in the news. Marianne Anderson had just been invited to sing at the White House, the first African-American to do so. Marianne's music was breaking down walls. Could a portrait by Laura break down walls too? Laura asked Marianne if she could sit for a portrait. Yes, she would. Day after day, Marianne posed. Laura mixed shades of brown, burnt umber with yellow and dabs of white. No, that wasn't it. How about a little green and violet? Closer. Laura wiped her paint spattered forehead. Traces of red and cerulean blue? Laura looked at Marion and saw again the teenager singing so soulfully years ago. She heard again the music in all its beautiful shades of brown. She felt the melody travel down her fingers as she dipped her brush into the paints of her palette and found the exact luminous shade of Marion's beautiful brown skin, her gown, the room. Laura put down her brush. She held her breath as Marion studied the painting, hoping the great singer would see her spirit mirrored there. Marion smiled. Yes, she did. People flocked to see Laura's paintings as they traveled around the country. After the tour, Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. hung Laura's paintings in the National Portrait Gallery. Now her portraits weren't hidden in her bedroom, but hung in gilt frames on the walls of a real museum. Now everyone could see the rainbows shining through each tone of brown, and the children, like her nieces and nephews, could see faces like theirs and how beautiful they were. Yeah.